Hey everybody, welcome to Life Behind the Cover. I'm Taylor and today I'm sick. And today we're talking about LGBT plus reads for Pride Month. So obviously Pride Month is when all you L's, G's, B's, T's, Q's, A's, pluses are all celebrating Pride. However, it was really difficult to celebrate Pride this June. Of course, coronavirus kind of took away some Prides, which had to be done, unfortunately. But what I'm talking about is the Black Lives Matter movement that is really pushing forward right now. It's hard to sit here and talk about Pride when obviously a big part of our community is people of color and black people. And not only that, but the start of our community really started with those people as well. So if you don't know about Stonewall, I'm not gonna tell you here, but you should go and research if you don't know about it. So I, I think I would be remiss to not start this video saying obviously Black Lives Matter and without people of color, the LGBT community is not full. So it's difficult to celebrate our pride as being our minority when another minority that is also a part of ours is currently struggling with systematic racism. Obviously, I'm not the right voice to be talking about this because obviously I've never been able to experience what that's like. So down below, I'm going to link some videos that hopefully, if you're curious about them, you can look into it. And also, I'm going to link some black booktube channels down below. Um, I think that there's been some discussion in recent years about how black booktubers are not subscribed to as much, not looked at as much, which is just offensive to me because if you are a reader, I'd hope you have the knowledge to not be ignorant anymore, to not have that prejudice, or if you do have a prejudice, because we all have some amount of prejudices, to be able to understand that and actively go against it. So my hope is that our community can be inclusive. So with that said, happy pride to all my LGBT plus people. Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna move forward. I am gonna say one more thing. I am sick right now. This eye keeps watering. I cannot control it. So if you see that happening, you can assume that that's what it is. All right, let's jump into the books that we're talking about today. So my first book is probably, I think, the only one I don't have a physical copy for, which is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. I'm sorry if I pronounced Amal's name incorrectly. So this book is about a future where people have learned to go through strains of time. We have two opposing factions, the Commandment and the Garden, and they are both fighting for control over the future to become what they want it to be. So they send agents back in time to try to lean the past towards where they want their future to go. This book involves two opposing agents at the top of their game, red and blue, and they start to kind of speak to each other in these various ways. They can't speak to each other face to face because Obviously, they're opposing agents, but they do really interesting ways in which to speak to each other. And some love, some friendship maybe grows from that, um, because they're really the only two who can fully understand the job, even though they're opposing factions. It's a really great book. It's super, super quick. I have a review on Goodreads if you want to see it. My Goodreads will be posted in the description box, and it's spoiler free, so you can go read my emotions. My next book is one I don't think people would think of when they think of LGBT reads, and that is the Renegades trilogy. Obviously, Obviously, I lent out my Supernova book. Obviously, it was a bad time to do that because now I have to pull them on a camera. This book is not only a wonderful book by a wonderful author, but also has characters that aren't the main characters who are queer or in the LGBT umbrella. So the one of the main characters' parents are two gay males who adopted him. I personally love this because growing up, I didn't have a lot of queer or gay content to find, and then when we did get that stuff, which was wonderful, it was really focused on who the main character was, and it was like, straight couples are fine, obviously they're part of the world, but you're telling me that there's 20 characters in this book and not one of them is queer? It doesn't make sense to me. I'd like a book where it feels realistic, like the world. People have gay parents. People have a gay uncle or gay friends, and I love to see that. I love to see main characters, too. Love stories between gay people, obviously that's pretty much the only contemporary I read. But I also love to see it where it's just in the world because it is. That's what it is. I hope that didn't sound crazy. Okay, so we're moving on to one of my favorite books of all time, which is 
Carry On. Carry On was written by Rainbow Rowell. If you don't know the beginnings of this book, Fangirl, which was her YA, it was actually a more new adult book about a girl in college who was obviously a fangirl for this book. So years later, she wrote this book. I believe it kind of began in Fangirl as like a Harry Potter type fandom. So this is kind of that idea. That said, it's so much more than that. So I've heard people say it's like a Harry Potter ripoff. I would say it's more of like Rainbow Rowell's take on a Harry Potter type world. Like this is a magic school. It does have three main characters, two are males, one's a female. Like I can see the comparisons. That said, this book is so much more than that. The characters are insane. I love them so much. It's amazing and I love it. It's very character driven in my opinion. I love the magic system and I say that in a way that most times when you're like, this magic system is so good, it's like, yeah, Brandon Sanderson spent 10 years developing a magic system. This one's not quite like that. I just love the idea of magic coming from language and it's language that we give power to and that makes sense to me and I think that that's really cool. So if you haven't read this book, which I hope most of you have, read it. That said, I haven't read the second book yet because I'm very nervous about it. I want it to be as good. I don't know. My next book is a book I've brought up a couple times in past videos, which is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I did just bring this up in my summer reads video, so I did explain it there, so I'm gonna explain it really quickly here so I'm not repeating myself. Son of the President, a Prince of Britain, are enemies to maybe more. They're bad publicity because they were not doing good things in public because they did have some kind of rivalry there. They're forced together. It's great. It's super sweet. This one is adult. Oh, this is how you lose a Time Wars adult too, but so is this. I'm just pointing that out. So really good, really sweet, fun read. The next books I want to talk about is The Raven Cycle. These are too much to all hold together. Does this book, not this specific book, but does this series have LGBT elements? Yes it does. Am I going to tell you about them? Absolutely not. Because that's a spoiler, Brenda. Um, when I purchased these books, I purchased them all at once, and the cashier was like, oh my god, I love these books so much, and she was like, and went off about the LGBT plus aspect of these books. I think it's a spoiler. I don't want to say anything about it other than it does have aspects of it. And obviously it's a very popular series from a while ago. Super great books to read. It's interesting that I know 100% where some books are and then the other time I'm like, where? I keep taking from these shelves. These shelves are my gay shelves, maybe? My next book is Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. First of all, the cover is like so pretty. This book is a female-female romance, which in my opinion is not as represented as male-male romance. So when I find it, I do try to read it or it goes on my TBR. This book is quick. It is super light for the most part. This book is about a girl who who has been broken up with by somebody that she loved and goes to a school in Scotland partially to get away from her but mostly because she'd been looking at the school for a really long time and now that she wasn't attached she felt like she really wanted to go. Her new roommate is a princess and their personalities kind of clash and she kind of talks back to the princess. This is like a hate to something more kind of book Again, I love a female female romance and it's quick worth the read. The next book I have is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Negan. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This book is actually a fantasy world where there are... My dog is barking. So this book is a female female romance that takes place in a fantasy world. The fantasy world has three cast systems revolving around demons so the highest cast will be full demons the next uh cast below that is part demon so think of like humanoid cat creatures kind of thing who will have like ears but mostly human features and then the bottom level who are paper cast are not demon at all. The king in this realm, who is a demon, will take what is essentially concubines against their will, typically but not always, to become paper girls at the palace where they will live and be essentially used. This is about a girl who has golden eyes but is in the paper cast and is thus chosen to be a paper girl. If you do not love 
high fantasy, I think that this book will still be for you because it doesn't have a ton of world building. I didn't love this book, but the relationship in here was not why. It was because I went in expecting more fantastical elements and didn't really get as much as I was hoping for. So yeah, there's different casts and things, but I wouldn't say that you're kind of overwhelmed by the fantasy here. The relationship I thought was very sweet though in it. So keep that in mind if you're looking. If you are a high fantasy person, go in with that mindset. And if you're not, you know that this can still kind of be a book that might be for you. Okay, so my next two books I talked about again in my last video because most of the contemporaries I read are queer contemporaries. I talked about both fairly in depth in that video so I won't fully go into them. Seven vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda and What If It's Us, which is co-written by Adam Silvera, are both queer love stories for the most part with other things involved. I would say these two authors are some that a lot of people know for their LGBT reads. If you want to know more you can go to my summer reading which I will put in the eye above. But in general this one's about a boy named Simon who is struggling with finding out his identity and at the same time he's being blackmailed by a person who is saying that he will out him. This book is about two men also, but their love story isn't quite as easy as most light romance. Um, they're struggling with perfecting their dates and it's also really good. It's also worth noting that Adam Silvera has a huge catalog of LGBT books, however they tend to be quite, I don't want to say dark, but they're definitely more difficult reads. I have not read them yet, I'm hoping to, but I think it's worth saying if you're looking for more uh, LGBT reads, he typically has male male romance in his and they are a little bit heavier. So finally I want to talk about two books I haven't read because they are brand new releases or have not been released yet. So the first one being The Fascinators by Andrew Eliopoulos. It's by a guy named Andrew. From what I know, I don't read a ton of the uh, summaries of books. I will sometimes, so I try not to. This book is about a friendship group of three that's kind of struggling and there also is some magical elements. I don't think it's magical realism. I think it's like kind of full magical and one of the boys in the group I think is starting to fall for another boy in the group. It looks very interesting. I think it just came out. The Fascinators just came out May 12th, so it's a very recent release. The next book is The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. This one came out early February, so it's not as new of a release, but it is, I believe, a male-male romance, or I should say boy-boy because they're not adults. Both of these boys' parents are involved in a space program, and so that's how they kind of meet. I don't know any more than that for what I've already said. I don't love to read into it because I find I'm spoiled sometimes by summaries. That said, it looks super interesting. My last book, because I lied before, I have three, not two, is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. This book is going to be released in September 2020, so unless you've gotten an advanced copy, you won't be able to read it until then, unfortunately. That said, this book is so cool looking and I'm really excited for it. I think it's also worth mentioning that this is a Latin X book, so that's very exciting. People of color in the LGBT community. And this book I know is about ghosts, kind of demons maybe and it looks very interesting. I mean Cemetery Boys alone the name I think draws interest for myself. Oh my god my light has been off. Okay so my light was it just fucking turned off again. Okay so my ring light is not working and I don't know how long it hasn't been working for so if this is darker which I know I know it is um, I'm sorry. Um, it won't return back on. I think it may be too hot. I'm not positive so sorry for the lighting for the end of this video. Hopefully it's okay. Moving on. If you have LGBT plus reads that you would like to share, I would love to hear about them, especially um, with people of color in them. And lesbians, because I don't, I feel like we don't get enough of that. If you like this video, please give it a like. I'd super appreciate it. And subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Happy fucking pride, everybody.